Of all the things I've seen on the boat, this is what I want most of all. You don't want the electric motor? We've been criticized a lot for our, our methods. The big game changer that we've had has been the Vesper Marine AIS system. You're either going to smash into things and it's going to go really badly, or it's going to be beautiful. We're Michael and Joel, and the star of the show is Lola. Our home is a sailboat, and we live for adventure. Subscribe and join us for honest, relatable stories that entertain and inspire. Thank you to our patrons for keeping the dream alive. Let's go, baby! These are the tales of Boab. some guests on the boat right now. Yeah, some very special VIP guests. And they have a question. What's the question? You had a question. Was yeah. it for YouTube or for us? It was for you. Well, is that a 100 watt panel each? Yes. That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> riveting. So, so riveting. riveting. It's Herbie and Maddie. Their YouTube channel is called The Rigging Doctor. And we are about to go over to their boat for a little boat tour, an interview. We're gonna get to know them and find out what makes these guys so special and unique. They have done some epic things like crossing the Atlantic. These guys are salty. Herbie has another question. What's it like having a boat with an actual engine? Michael, you wanna take that one? Um, it's smelly, it's loud, it's a lot of work to work on, but I guess the advantage is that we can go kind of wherever we want to go when she's running it's a lot of work maybe yeah. if it was a brand new engine and we were diesel mechanics i think if we were diesel mechanics is the the operative um but for example situation. we didn't have to tack our way in here like you guys did yeah we just had our mainsail up so much fun oh was it fun no so what's it like having no, no motor no. maybe we should <laughs> let's go to their boat and ask them some questions like what's yeah. it like they have a motor but it's an electric one into this really nice anchorage and it turns out we're anchored next to a couple bumps. Ah, that'll yeah, happen. Yeah. <laughs> the retail value went down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. This is Herbie. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Maddie. And this is Charlie. Tell us what, what kind of boat we're on here. Yes, this is a 1968 Morgan 45. It's a cutter rigged, full keel, really heavy and really slow. <laughs> Now, I've never tried this beer, but they pulled out some beers out of their Her humongous man. fridge freezer yeah. situation. We'll get to the tour a little bit later, but first, I think we're going to sit down, uh, interview style, and find out why these guys are out here, why they're sailing in the particular style that they are, because it's it's pretty hardcore. I don't think a lot of people would want to do it. <laughs> these, guys, yeah. these guys need a shirt, S-A-F. <laughs> One thing that, that threw me off. Herbie is a dentist. Herbie wants to be a dentist? No, he, Herbie is a dentist. <laughs> and he's out here doing the sailing life. That was, that was a shocker to me. And after the episode, he's going to help me with my teeth. You do some oral surgery? No, some, I don't some want Herbie. Shucking. I don't want Herbie um, to look into my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He's already yeah. looked. Oh my God. I'm I know so at some point when you were a kid, you fell and chipped your front tooth. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. This is bad. Did you notice my <laughs> chipped teeth? Wait, you just have the central. Like you have a facet missing on the front uh, and then the nerve blood inside. Yes, wow, that's yeah. incredible. Uh, <laughs> and this is without my glasses. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Imagine what he can do in an office. I want to know the way that you guys are sailing and why you are choosing to sail in this unique way. Yes, <laughs> that's an excellent question. We have an electric motor 
we have synthetic rigging and, and hank on sales, hank on sales. Right. um and so we've been criticized a lot for our our methods but actually we love them and wouldn't have it any other way yeah so our main goal is simplicity like go with as little to break as possible so the fewer the systems the fewer the complexity the easier it is to sell the electric motor um we did it because we don't actually use our motor very often we use it mostly just for docking or coming into an anchorage that's crowded so we decided it was much simpler and lighter to have an electric motor uh, and much more green. And we really like the sustainable aspect of sailing. So the electric motor gave us uh, the ability to go long distances without using tons of fuel and without releasing all these the smoke into the air. <laughs> yeah, and then when you get there, just solar panels charges it back up, so. Yeah. We're filling up right now. <laughs> as far as Hank on sales, um, it is really, it sounds like it's much less simple than it is, but it is actually for simplicity. We have a cutter rig set up. So we have two head sails and they're both Hank on. So Herbie just made these soft tanks uh, with a bike. And when you go to raise the sail, they go straight up and we have this downhaul. And that's very important because if you're lowering, or lowering the sail under load, you're gonna need to pull the sail down physically with this downhaul, and it works every time 100%. They go up or they come down, and when we were in Baltimore before we left, pretty much the grand majority of my rigging jobs were fixing frillers, and I thought, man, they keep breaking on everyone, we'll just take ours off and just go hank on. So with hank on sails, there's actually just a lot less to go wrong. Uh, the sail comes down, the sail goes up. You do have to go up to the mast to raise the sails. You can't do everything from the cockpit, so it's a little more work. A little but more walking. A little more walking, but honestly, when you're in the middle of the ocean, you want as much work as you can get because it breaks up the monotony. <laughs> yeah. Monomonotony. Monotony. <laughs> What's your route? How far have you sailed? Yeah. Yeah. So, and in how many years has it taken? It's been four years. We've gone 15,000 miles. Uh, yeah, we, we started in Baltimore, Maryland. And then we went down the ICW, down to Florida, then to the Bahamas, then up to Bermuda, over to the Azores, and then- We loved the Azores. Yeah. Those were probably our favorite spot. Um, we stayed there for 10 months, and then yeah. we crossed over to mainland Portugal. And then from there, we were so close to the Med. We were might like, as might well. as well. Yeah, so we went into the Med for a little bit. <laughs> Just up until Spain. Yeah. And after Spain, we came out into Madeira, and then Cape Verde, and Which we decided... Which off the coast of Africa. That's right. And then from there, down to South America, we went to Suriname. And, and up to the VI. And that brings us to where we are now. We went from the VI to Puerto Rico. And all of that, like Herbie said, took about four years. Yeah. We had planned originally to be only nine months. <laughs> yep. But when you're on an adventure like this, you just can't have time constraints. And with the electric motor, we really can't have time constraints. So that's kind of what we're all about. Just living day to day, experiencing life with no time limits and just it, it allows us to really immerse ourselves into each culture that we visit and it's just been the best way to experience the world. So what's your biggest takeaway or like the best lesson you've learned about yourselves in this process? That might be different for us. What's yours? Just relax. It's just gonna work out in the end or it's not. <laughs> and don't stress about it because it's gonna happen, whichever way it's gonna go. Is there any situation that comes to mind, like that kind of brings that? Docking. Docking. Reverse. Yep, we're going too fast. Not gonna make it. Yep. Not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. You're either gonna smash into things and it's gonna go really badly, or it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> so just come in, be ready, have your fenders and have a plan, and hopefully it goes according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest lesson I've taken away from this is patience um, and just being able to, let's see, this is a loaded question. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> being able to just be comfortable with yourself and um, comfortable with who you are and being alone 
is really important because I'm a huge extrovert. And so the biggest challenge, I think, for me throughout both of the ocean crossings was just being secluded, like the most secluded a person could possibly be on this planet. And that was just the fact that I as a, like was able to overcome that. I've learned a lot about myself and what I am capable of. And I think the other biggest thing that we've taken away from it has been just that it's all about people and humanity is just, is good. People are generally good and you just don't see that in the news and on Facebook and all these social media outlets and the media in general uh, tends to put humans in a really dark light. Exactly. And what we've learned in all of our travels, especially in the boating world, is that everyone is just nice. It, it, like the people you meet in general, they all have good intentions and they're all friendly and they all have a story. And when you find their, out their story, it's just, it's enriching everyone around you. So the people have really left a huge impression on us. Yeah, and actually, so I'm a, quite an introvert, so dealing with people always stressed me out. And after having crossed the ocean, I realized what is actually something to be stressed out about, and it's not people or due dates or deadlines or anything that doesn't matter. It's, you know, there's there's real things to be stressed out about, like... Climate you know, change. Or <laughs> dying in a storm. Like, like <laughs> big issues. And it's like, so now, a lot of stuff that used to stress the heck out of me. I'm, Everything has been put in perspective. Yeah, it's, it's pretty so, good. So to give them more of an idea, I, we talked about you being a dentist, and what, what, what were you doing before? I'm an art teacher, so I was teaching high school art, uh, which... I adored, and it made it very difficult for me to leave. I just started my career as an art teacher. I'm an artist. I love doing big paintings. You can't really do that on a sailboat. But I've been able to kind of adapt that lifestyle into to fit into this 45-foot space. So now I still do paintings for people. I do commission work, and I turn this entire salon area into my studio, <laughs> and I just make it work, and it's been wonderful because you can't stop doing what you love. It, it just doesn't... You, you can't. You just make it work. You fit it into your life. So when someone comes over to Rigging Dr. Channel to check you out, what can they expect? A mix. So there's <laughs> going to be the how-to stuff because there's... You know, the nitty gritty knots and splices and all that really technical stuff. And then there's also just the adventures that rigging your own boat can get you to. We have kind of two types of videos on our channel. We have the educational ones that Herbie was just mentioning. And then we also have the vlog, the day to day life on a boat, what that throws at you. And, and what do you guys have coming up? Oh, oh, boy. Actually, we have some exciting stuff coming up. Yeah. there's uh, When we crossed the Atlantic this last time, we filmed the daily vlog. So every episode is a day at sea on a 28-day passage. So that's really exciting. Um, and we're also going to be the first boat ever to do the entire ICW with an electric motor. Um, and then after that, we're going to be refitting our 30-foot Allberg to be the ultimate cruising boat in our eyes. So we're going to be refitting it with electric and solar and lithium batteries and just everything that we could the, possibly want. Or everything that you actually need to go cruising. Because yes. a lot of people, when they buy a boat, you know, they have all these ideas of what they need to have, and it's really expensive, but you actually don't really need that much. So we're going to... This boat has nothing. It doesn't even have plumbing. So we're going to just build it up to be what you need to go cruising. And Absolute take it on simplicity. Yeah. And then we're going to go cruising in it. Yeah. <laughs> One more question. So, w w tell us about Charlie and what it's like to live with a parrot on a boat. The big yep. red elephant in the room. Yes, they're quite big. Uh, <laughs> Charlie is a huge responsibility, but it is the most rewarding pet <laughs> to have on a boat. She is a green wing macaw. <laughs> it's the second... <laughs> Charlie, just... Trying to get her to like face the camera a little. She has a big personality, but she's really sweet and cuddly, and uh, we love her so much. 
So parrots are great because they're super intelligent. You can train them to poop in certain places. We're still working on that. That's a big one. <laughs> and eventually she will talk, but she doesn't talk yet because she's only one year old. Charlie doesn't seem to get too jealous. Thankfully. We're gonna focus on just the things that we changed and added that made our boat life so much better. And we're gonna start with our bed, actually. Uh, this is the V-Birth where we sleep at anchor. And it's actually an Ikea mattress pad on top of an Ikea memory foam mattress that we just cut to size um, with a kitchen knife. And it's been the best thing because when you're living on a sailboat, the most important thing is comfort. We're moving out of the V-Bird. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's basically a bedroom with a comfortable bed. Are the ladders so Charlie can get up there? Yeah, this is how Charlie gets oh. When she gets tired, she literally just gets onto the floor, walks across, climbs up onto her bed and goes to sleep. It's the cutest thing you will ever see in your life. Our head is a little bit different because we actually redid the entire thing in the Azores. No. We have a nature's head composting toilet and it is fantastic. We've never had any problems with it. The only thing is every now and then we have a little bug problem, which is happening right now. Perfect timing. This is all Japanese cedar that Herbie has treated so that it doesn't rot and it's been fantastic. He also lowered the floor so that he could stand up in the shower <laughs> uh, because Herbie is six foot two. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the salon where we spend most of our time and just like Joel and Michael, we have turned our sea birth into just, well, for us it's mayhem, but it's big storage. We have our water tanks underneath our V-Birth bed and also on either side of our salon. Uh, oh my. <laughs> oh, that's great, Lola. We're doing <laughs> This is Carl, and Carl is actually fantastic when we're in heavy weather and we're kind of bunkered inside. He shows us the sea state while we're out, and the way he's leaning is how much we are uh, healing. <laughs> this is a rug that we got in Morocco, and this is the knot that we tied at our wedding. <laughs> So the galley was a big game changer. Originally the boat had a stainless steel double sink, which had many sinks, which was cool, but each one was so small you couldn't really do anything. So in the Azores, we gutted everything completely out, butcher block countertops, a dropping cutting board into a big single sink. So you put the cutting boards in, you can chop stuff and do whatever you need, and anything that spills or whatever goes into the sink, so it's less mess in the boat. Giant fridge and freezer. We have 14 cubic feet and it's huge. So for long crossings, we vacuum pack meats, put them in the freezer, and we have plenty of space to keep all the food for a crossing. And then plenty of time after we get there to find a place to get more food. So like, we never, we never worry about running out of food because we just carry so much. A great thing that we added since they are top loading is that yeah. Herbie actually put a layer of cutting boards underneath. Uh, so that we could actually reach the food because it was all the way down at the bottom and uh, yeah, They're about it was three just, feet deep. <laughs> yeah. Maddie just couldn't reach it. I couldn't reach it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the type of uh, compressor or refrigerator? Oh, yeah, so it's a Dometic compressor uh, refrigeration unit and we just have a, a single kind of like a dorm room freezer setup Right there it keeps the beer cold so that's the freezer. This area is just really cold. And then there's a spillover fan to the other side. And that just keeps everything uh, well below 40 degrees. The big game changer that we've had has been the Vesper Marine AIS system. So this is the XB8000. It transmits our AIS, but the best part is installation was so easy. I literally unplugged the antenna cable that went to our old radio and then hooked it up to this splitter thing and then hooked up the Vesper and that's it. Like it's just on. It has anchor drag feature. So you set on your phone, like the radius to your anchor and it plots everything. If your anchor drags, it lets you know if anything is happening around you, it lets you know. And the best part about it, 
had a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about it is um, when boats are coming on a collision course, it not only tells you how close you're going to be and when, but who's going to pass on what side. So are they going to pass in front of you, behind you, on your port, your starboard? Like, it's just all shown on this really easy to see image, and it's. It just it works and it's it's been great that has been a huge game changer for the ocean this is one of the most important things on our entire boat this is the dickinson diesel heater even though we don't have a diesel engine anymore we kept our diesel tank to feed our diesel heater because we used to live aboard in baltimore all through the winter and summer and during those cold cold winters this heater kept the interior of the boat at like 80 degrees we actually had to open portholes to <laughs> air it out a bit so this is a fantastic addition we got it used at bacon sales in annapolis and i wouldn't trade it for anything just like Michael and Joel, we also have the Arigo alcohol stove, and it is fantastic. We can't recommend it enough. But in addition, we also have the oven section of it, and that has changed our lives because Herbie loves to bake bread, and the solar oven is fantastic, but it's not fantastic for baking bread, and if there isn't any sunlight, this is a game changer. <laughs> So this is our Quiet Torque electric yacht 20 kilowatt motor. It's the QT20. This is what we use for our inboard power. So we took out our diesel, we put this guy in, and it's been awesome. And the best part is how quiet it is. Mads? Try being that close to a motor without any insulation and hear yourself. What kind of battery bank do you have to power this? And what kind of speed can you make with this bad boy? And for how long? What battery do we have? We have lead acid batteries. What which battery suck. do we wish we had? Lithium, which is what we're <laughs> going to be doing soon. We're going to upgrade as soon as we get to Florida. And then speed and range. We can hit haul speed, which for our boat is seven and a half knots. We just can't do it for very long. It's about 20 minutes and then the batteries are done but we can go much slower at like one to two knots for like 20 some hours. Okay, so he calls himself the rigging doctor. So of course we have to go check out the rigging. And I also, I'm very interested in their wind vane autopilot situation. Hey, Char Charlie, what's up? What's up, buddy? <laughs> she doesn't know what to think about that. So this is our monitor wind vane, which has been awesome. For two ocean crossings, it steers the boat, takes no electricity, never complains, and just works. All right, let's see how this is rigged up. So, you got the flappy paddle up top, there's another flappy paddle down in the water, and then you have these control lines that run from one of the flappy paddles up to the wheel. So you just click it in, and it's engaged. So you set the paddle to be at the angle to the wind that you want to be, and then as soon as you engage it, it keeps the boat at that angle to the wind. So it's nice because if the wind changes in the night, you're not going to have an XNL jive because the boat will just change angle. So your sails will just stay perfectly trimmed to whatever you set the wind vane to. Of all the things I've seen on the boat, this is what I want most of all on Shock Mate. I want this system. You don't want the electric motor? I would rather have this than the electric <laughs> motor, honestly. So yeah. Far. I Yeah, I'm still... We just rebuilt I've, our engine. We've just worked so too hard on old Volvo Pinta to give up on her quite <laughs> quite so soon. And we're motoring into the wind, so I kind of like it. But I would love to have so this back. Okay, another huge game changer are chest high lifelines. So we got these lifelines here. If you fall, you know, they actually do something. They don't just trip you as you fall overboard. Let's hear about this Dyneema rigging. Okay, so it's all synthetic. There's no steel. You don't worry about corrosion. It's just rope rigging with Dyneema really easy to do and really really easy to maintain yourself so this has been super strong and right now it's already 5,000 miles beyond the life of regular steel rigging so it's just really strong back in the day I actually developed a new knot and a new splice to make this whole system possible and on our website and our videos and everything it shows you how to do it yourself because if you do it yourself it's really cheap so then you save a lot of money and then you go cruising what's better so this is where the magic happens. So normal turnbuckles and all, they're expensive, it's steel, it's issues. 
This is $24 in materials. You can tension your rigging with dead eyes and then off you go. Another game changer has been these rope fenders. When you tie up to a concrete seawall, air fenders can pop and then your boat's just bashing up against it. We just put the rope fenders there. They're never gonna pop. And you're literally grinding on rope. And we made these out of our old running rigging, so it didn't really cost us anything to make them either. We hope you guys enjoyed meeting Maddie and Herbie and checking out Sailing Wisdom as much as we did. And a big thank you to Warren and Jerry, patrons of ours, and Herbie and Maddie who connected us. Yeah, Herbie and Maddie reached out to us. Um, Warren is the one who got us in touch, asked yeah. us if he could give Herbie our phone number. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome that they yeah. did that for us and made it possible for us to meet up. Head over to Herbie and Maddie's channel, leave them a comment, tell them that the bums sent you over. And uh, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought, but. I was typing. <laughs> I was just, you know, reenacting. Right. Hi, That's bums. That's what it's gonna look like. Yeah. Give him a high five for us. Psh, psh. Thanks, guys. See All right. Bye.